the big news today? Um, the, the, the big news, <laughs> they said the, the Democrats on polls say that Obama doesn't have a chance in hell of oh. winning on his record or on his personality or anything, so. Oh. Hello, this is not a spring chicken. The big news today. Oh, wait a minute. Is this really news? Anyway, the pollsters and the Democratic, well, and the Democrats are saying that Obama has no chance at all of winning, not even from his own party. Hmm. Really? Does he know that? I think he was counting on that far left. Well, for now, we're going to bring old Cam on with comments on the headlines of today. Democrats on polling advice. Obama is not to run on the economy or what he has done, but instead make it, I am, better than he is, no matter how bad I am. Oh, is that the devil you know? Okay, I get, I know Rex, uh, why does Rex always come out on days there's negative things about the president? You think that I, I deliberately choose that to hurt Rex's feelings? No, because Monty would bite me. This is her kid. This is an example of what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. She's got seven brothers and sisters. But, the, the, the okay, he's been told by James Carville, all of their pollsters and things, he cannot win this election. Yeah. He did, they said it, the only chance you have now is to go. The devil, you, even though I'm not worth a damn, I destroyed the economy, I've made things worse, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. And then they said, well, because, you know, he's a venture capitalist. They, they said, actually, don't say that. They have to go. They told him he has to destroy Mitt Romney, personally destroy Romney. Well, the gentleman is from Chicago, and that's how they do politics. But my mommy is from Cicero. My mommy's family kick the asses of people in Cicero because they consider them to be pansies. And people in Chicago are considered to be pansies to the people in, Chicago, in Cicero. That's where Al Capone was headquartered out of. And screenwriter exposes past sex abuse at an elite New York City prep school. I mean, I really, I, I don't buy any of this stuff that 40 years after the fact that they come out and they tell everybody they were abused. Well. I mean, I've never hid the fact that my mother used to use a switch on my behind. <laughs> well, well my, my parents were old world folks. I mean, you tell about, they go, my mother, we had... But uh, they I, didn't call it abuse then. Oh, God. I mean, my first thing my mother would do when we'd move into a place is she'd plant a willow tree. And that basically, that was indicated, you know, well, you know what I'm going to do? Willow switches are really... Mm -hmm. Plus my family, I used to make fun of the fact my... Um, after my father got married to my mother, my father had been working on a movie where he learned to use a bullwhip and my mother would practice with his bullwhip. Mm. She could stand there. She could basically, with the wrist, snap of the wrist, she could get your attention real quick if you were bent over and doing something wrong. So, uh, they, they basically talked to the jail cell for doing that today, but we got our ten we were good little kids, folks. I, I have all I have perfect attendance in school. I was a good little behaved person. Well, slowing user growth, user growth, doom Facebook. Yeah, because there's more people. More people drop Facebook a day than join Facebook, and since they can't figure out how to mobile, I mean, okay, what we're doing is we're having to rejigger our websites so that we can be mobile. The problem with Facebook is Facebook can't be made mobile. The very design makes it impossible to make to monetize off of mobile because those little areas that they have to use to put money, you know, to, to put their advertisements in, those don't show up. Oh, they don't? Uh -uh. So they said that it's, uh, you know, Facebook, okay, it, but as we've tried to explain before because we've been doing the social media stuff for a long time, mm -hmm. that uh, you have to be, what is in is out very quickly. Twitter stands because Twitter is only 140 characters and it can, it's a text driven thing, which means it's not, and then their pictures are all with little, little tiny little short links on them and their other things. So therefore, Twitter is not complicated. It's why the federal government has Twitter listed as an emergency service thing. Facebook is extremely complicated in trying to change its mode, but they're trying to change its mode from out of the country now because they, they're, a lot of people are pissed at them. Cool. And World War One veterans missing metal turns up on eBay. I know. That basically is not a smart thing to do because... Then they know where it is. Uh, what most people don't realize is that most metals are stamped with a, with, um, with a serial number on them. 
they know who those men are. So if you walk into a place, I mean, can you imagine me? I can go to the Hollywood, you know, go to the movie supply, uh, supply store and get myself a chest full of medals. You know the difference between a chest full of medals and a real medal? Mm -hmm. the, the medals you're getting from Hollywood are basically one-sided. There's nothing on the back. Um, and if they catch you with the medal, you know, they catch you with ribbons that you don't deserve, they can check to see if you earn those ribbons. So you, you, wow. you really can't fool people because mm -hmm. every ribbon is unique. Oh. Yeah. They know if you were given a, a ribbon for the Battle of Saipan, that there was X amount of ribbons for the Battle of Saipan come out. And guess what's on the back of each of those ribbons? Mm -hmm. A little tiny serial number. Oh, I didn't realize there's serial number on the ribbon. That's how they. Uh, that's how you always wow. know when a politician walks out with his showing his ribbons and stuff. Uh, he basically, well, let's see. I, I you know, see. Uh, they go check and see such and such and such. And such. Was was Congressman mm -hmm. Joe Blow at the Battle of Saipan? Yeah, that's easy enough to check, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. And World War. Oh, police surround home and hunt for Auburn suspect. Yeah, he surrendered. I don't understand. You kill three people. My father used to say, my father said, how do you know a criminal is really stupid? How? He surrenders. Oh. He said, you basically, he said, you know why cops are smarter than criminals? Because he said, if we committed a crime, we'd get the hell out of the state. <laughs> I know. Amelia Earhart. Oh. Mystery may be solved in the Pacific. Oh, uh, they think they, well, they've always had a good idea where the plane probably went down. What I don't understand is they landed on an atoll, which is now populated with people. So why would, and they had water, they had food, so why did they die? That's the part that makes no sense whatsoever. Because it is now a very populated island, which means it was just as, it was just as inhabitable a uh, long time ago as it is now. No, didn't they say... <laughs> we we're trying to say the Japanese captured her, which makes it, that could be, they could have kept, they could have taken her and the other guy prisoner and then took him to another island because at that time the Japanese were all over the area and a plane landing like that, that could have really shook them up. Oh, and about the stupid criminals, don't they always see that the criminals go back to the crime site? That's how they catch them because mm -hmm. they have this thing about hanging around and you never, um, I worked on an episode a long time ago, Hawaii Five O, when uh, Jack Lord was talking to Hume Cronin, and um, and Hume Cron Jack Lord said that well, there has never been a perfect crime, and uh, and then Hume Cronin, who was a master criminal on the show, said that's because no one ever knows the crime was committed, Mr. McGarrett. Oh. Mm -hmm. And Florida woman doused in gas and set on fire at 7-Eleven. Uh, I mean, I don't. Un I can. I can understand killing somebody. I actually, I can understand torturing somebody by shooting their kneecaps off. I, I'm a violent person by no right, but I wouldn't. You know. Yeah, I but see, part of it is if you set them on fire at a gas station, couldn't the whole gas station? It mean, could blow up. You can kill yourself. I mean, so. <laughs> but I mean, I, I. Okay. Remember, folks. I only played the bad guy in movies. That wasn't really what. Well, and also this. It, this could have been somebody that was um, accidentally spilled some, like somebody moved, they spilled some gas on them. Yeah, but right. Yeah. And then somebody in their car was smoking. That's they tell you. I mean, how many people? Okay, don't use cell phones at gas stations. Don't use cell phones can cause a spark. They showed it on MythBusters. You can go kaboom. They also have warning signs at the gas station. Nobody reads but, them though. No. <laughs> and Stephanopoulos and ABC sink to new lows on this week. Oh, uh, basically, they're 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 so partisan that it's unbelievable. They're 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 doing personal attacks on Mitt Romney, which uh, they they okay. What was is the the uh, all the stuff about the president in big trouble is being leaked now, and basically the networks are all trying to do what they can to help destroy Romney. The problem comes is. Okay, nobody in their right mind my age wants a person the age of Mitt Romney as president. But there's a there's an advantage of having a person in his later 60s running for president. What? They already know all the bad things about you if you've been in the political life your entire life. And if you're a businessman, they really know all the bad things. <laughs> because the other people want to know those things. So they, there's nothing that they can say about Romney that people already don't know. That was the one thing about Obama is he hadn't been in politics. Although he'd been in politics, he hadn't been out. But he was a stealth candidate. He was this mm -hmm. guy that was—he was a neighborhood uh, 
you know, coordinator and all this stuff. He was just a good, he was a good one. He, he was a good old boy. He's a good old boy and he's Afro-American, <laughs> yeah, but he was a good old boy. Yep. And a Monty Bubbleism from the Mark Twain of the Animal Kingdom. Okay, that, um, that, it, it, you, the, the premise, electing the devil you know versus the level devil you don't know has never actually worked. They always go for the devil they don't know because they hope that devil is going to be better than the previous devil. 